working in the emergency department and your next patient is Sally, a 42 year old female who presents with right upper quadrant pain, fever and nausea for the past six hours. She tells you her pain is worse after eating fried chicken and she's also experiencing some pain in her right shoulder. On examination, she has right upper quadrant tenderness and she has a positive Murphy's sign. Blood tests show an elevated white cell count and C-reactive protein level. They also show an elevated AST and ALT level. An abdominal ultrasound confirms gallstones, a thickened gallbladder wall, and the presence of pericholecystic fluid. Sally's presentation is consistent with acute cholecystitis. Hi everyone, this is Nisha from One Page Medicine. In this video, I'm gonna be going through the features of acute cholecystitis. We're gonna be breaking down the pathophysiology, epidemiology, clinical presentation, investigations, and management of acute cholecystitis. At the end, we'll check back in with Sally and see how she's faring in the emergency department. Acute cholecystitis refers to inflammation of the gallbladder. In 95% of cases, this inflammation is caused by a blockage of the cystic duct from a gallstone preventing the gallbladder from draining. This leads to the buildup of bile in the gallbladder, which then increases the intraluminal pressure, leading to inflammation and a possible secondary bacterial infection. This is known as calculus cholecystitis. In about 5% of cases, gallbladder inflammation is seen in the absence of gallstones, and this is known as acalculus cholecystitis. The pathophysiology of acalculus cholecystitis can be multifactorial. It's often seen in critically ill patients who are in the ICU receiving total parenteral nutrition, or those who've had long periods of fasting, or those who've had an ileus or a bowel obstruction. In all of these patients, there is no food in the small intestine, which means that the gallbladder is no longer stimulated to contract and release bile. This can lead to bile stasis and subsequently inflammation and infection of the gallbladder. Also, critically ill patients may often have hyperperfusion due to shock or trauma. This can affect the cystic artery, which supplies blood to the gallbladder, leading to ischemia, necrosis, and in some cases, perforation of the gallbladder. The classic risk factors for acute cholecystitis can be remembered using the five Fs. Females are three times more likely to develop gallstones and cholecystitis. This is likely due to estrogen, which increases the amount of cholesterol in bile, leading to the formation of gallstones. Fertile. Women of reproductive age and pregnant women are at a higher risk of developing acute cholecystitis. 40. Adults aged 40 to 60 years are the most common age group to develop acute cholecystitis. Fat. Obesity can lead to higher levels of cholesterol in the bile, making it more likely to form crystals that can turn into gallstones. Interestingly, rapid weight loss, especially with very low calorie diets, can also increase the risk of gallstone formation by increasing the secretion of cholesterol into bile as the body metabolizes stored fat. And of course, those with a family history of gallstones are also at higher risk of developing acute cholecystitis. So how does acute cholecystitis present clinically? The hallmark of cholecystitis is right upper quadrant pain, often after a fatty meal. Pain may be referred to the right shoulder. This is caused by the inflamed gallbladder causing irritation of the right hemidiaphragm, which shares innervation with the shoulder. Patient may also present with nausea, vomiting, and a fever. When you examine the patient, you may notice that they are tachycardic or have an elevated heart rate, and they are tachyneap, which means they have an elevated respiratory rate. They may also be febrile. On palpation of the abdomen, they will have tenderness in the right upper quadrant region. The patient will also be positive for Murphy's sign, which is highly suggestive of acute cholecystitis. Murphy's sign can be tested by placing your hand in the right upper quadrant region, which is the mid-clavicular line, just over where the gallbladder sits, and then asking the patient to inhale deeply. When the patient does this, the inflamed gallbladder moves downwards and makes contact with your hand. This causes sudden pain and the patient will stop inhaling abruptly due to the discomfort. So when cholecystitis is suspected, here's how we confirm it using some investigations. Blood tests may show an elevated white cell count and an elevated C-reactive protein. The liver function tests may also be mildly deranged 
especially if we're thinking the common bile duct is involved. On imaging, an abdominal ultrasound is the first line investigation. Findings suggestive of acute cholecystitis include the presence of gallstones or sludge, gallbladder wall thickening, and fluid around the gallbladder, which is also known as pericholecystic fluid. Treatment of acute cholecystitis depends on severity, but in most cases, management will include admitting the patient to the hospital for further investigations and management. Conservative management includes keeping the patient nil by mouth so that their gallbladder is no longer stimulated, placing them on intravenous fluids, and giving them intravenous antibiotics, which are usually broad spectrum as per local guidelines. It's also important to give the patient some analgesia to help manage their pain. Definitive management is surgical, which involves the removal of a gallbladder. This is called a cholecystectomy and is usually done laparoscopically or as a keyhole surgery. Ideally, it's done within 72 hours for acute cases. However, it can be delayed by six to eight weeks in some cases to allow the acute inflammation to settle. If the patient has acalculus cholecystitis or they're critically unwell, they may receive a percutaneous cholecystostomy, which is when a drain is inserted into the gallbladder to allow the infected material to be removed. The complications of acute cholecystitis include sepsis, gallbladder empyema, which is when the gallbladder fills with infected tissue and pus, a gangrenous gallbladder, and perforation, where there is a hole made through the gallbladder. So let's check back in with Sally, who's in the emergency department with a diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. You've explained everything to her, and she's been seen by the general surgical team, and she's been admitted. She started on some IV fluids, some antibiotics, and her pain is improving with some analgesia. Later on, Sally undergoes a laparoscopic cholecystectomy and makes a full recovery. So to summarize, acute cholecystitis refers to inflammation of the gallbladder and is mostly caused by gallstones. The risk factors include the five Fs, female, fat, 40, fertile, and those with a family history. The hallmark features of acute cholecystitis are right upper quadrant pain, a fever, and a positive Murphy sign on examination. Investigations will show an elevated white cell count and an abdominal ultrasound demonstrating gallstones, gallbladder wall thickening, and pericholecystic fluid. A patient with acute cholecystitis is best managed in the hospital and should receive intravenous fluids and antibiotics. The definitive management is a removal of the gallbladder known as a cholecystectomy. So there you have it guys. That's acute cholecystitis in a nutshell. For a quick overview of other types of gallbladder disease, check out the video linked here. For more information, visit the onepagemedicine.com website or follow us on Instagram at onepagemedicine.